I can't think of any technology, actually, that has advanced as fast. I mean, techno all technologies advan advance incredibly fast, but one that it is so obvious, and that's everything's obvious, I don't know, it is just extraordinary how much better, how much more reliable, and in pure terms of pure luminosity, the amount of light that these flashlights produce. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I gave this a nickname, the Sun. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and then traveling to the remotest parts of the world. I can't remember when I first went camping. I remember going caravanning when I was very, very tiny. In fact, there's a, there's a photograph of me standing next to a beach at a place called Broadstairs in England. My little friend, Sally. I'm, try, I'm, I'm dredging back because I'm trying to think about the first time I ever needed a torch, which I assume would have been camping. Now, we weren't big uh, caravanners and we weren't even particularly big campers until we came to Africa and then camping became quite a big thing, probably but only seriously started in 1975. Before then we didn't have a four-wheel drive, we, my, my dad had an old white Zephyr. The three of us would sit in the on the back seat, had this vinyl long back. Why am I even talking about this? I'm trying to dredge up what was the first, when was the first time I ever needed a torch and what was it? I do remember what it was. It was a long silver and had probably two AA batteries and it had a tiny little bulb and it was and it was a pen torch. I think they called them pen torches. I always used to think to myself, why doesn't somebody make a... Now by now I'm talking about the early 70s, traveling with my, my family in the Range Rover and we didn't have a good torch. We, we would have these horrible poxy torches with these little incandescent bulbs and uh, they, were, they were only slightly brighter than a glowworm in a jar. <clears throat> they weren't really very good and they weren't robust. The, the switching inside were just little, little copper plates and they used to slide on each other and they would just wear out and uh, they weren't even slightly waterproof. You just got a little bit of water, you know. And then in 19... 1985, I had the good fortune of being called to New York to work. There were two TV commercials and one of my very, very big clients, the Rembrandt Group in South Africa, tobacco at the time, they, they were big into tobacco. I was um, one of their senior, one of their two senior editors for about four years. And they called me to New York to edit two pictures and I was strolling down the street, looking at all these, and New York was fascinating, and it was scary. And I looked in the window and I saw this little flashlight. They call it, of course, a flashlight, not a torch, in America. And it was small, black, two double A's, and beautiful. This was my first mag light. It was a mini mag light. And that was my very first proper decent flashlight. Very soon after that mag light was brought into South Africa. I love torches. I've collected them for years. My collection started in 1985 with this guy. This is very familiar I'm sure to you. This is a mag light. I have no idea if I still have that torch. I haven't used it in decades. I have no purpose to use it in decades because um, I, other torches have replaced it. Here's another mag light, very familiar. Very, very nice as a mag light, a mini mag light. Many people don't know, you can also use it as a candle. Very nice performer, but every second, maybe third set of batteries, you have to replace the bulb because the bulbs uh, go gray and performance drops off dramatically. Now, the mag light's big show off number was that it was close to indestructible. It was at this time that I bought my, and I remember it was incredibly expensive, my mag charger. It was the equivalent of a three D cell 
mag light and it was probably three times the luminosity. It was a beautiful instrument. I used it on dozens of trips. This is my one. It still works well, although I, this is my third battery I've had in it. But of course I don't use that either anymore because again, it's not even as bright as this little guy. Watch this. Their show-off model. The top of the pile, the cream. And it's Now, hopefully you can see that. And look at that. But I remember giving my dad one for a gift. I was very proud of it. I thought, oh, this, is a, this is just the, this is like the best gift in the world. There's the, it, it, it's just, and I love the mag lights. I was such a big, big fan of the mag lights. In fact, um, my books have all had deep etched photographs of, of mag lights and how I would, I would, extol their virtues. I was given a couple of other maglite torches to review 3D cell which I actually still have and I use that as a security item it's literally in the bedroom I don't use it for camping that's why it's in such good condition uh, because it's not very bright. My other torches this one I use for signal signaling aliens on other planets this is a wolf eyes dragon now watch this as I turn it on See, it takes some time for the bulb to actually light, about five seconds. And the reason for that is that this top part of the torch here isn't battery, it's a great big capacitor. It's a special high dispersion system and it uses a very, very high voltage to operate. This is incredibly bright. And what surprises me about Maglite is that they were, they must have done well as a company. I mean, they were everywhere. I mean, Maglites was the torch of choice, you know, and then they went LED. Maglite, this is only about a year old, a three cell LED. Interestingly enough, you can take this and also convert it for not very much money also to LED. Other companies were bringing out torches using LED technology and so was Maglite, but Maglites was a quarter of the luminosity. I don't know, it was a bit odd. They didn't seem to be investing in this new LED technology. Maybe they were just resting on their laurels. Maybe it was a badly run company and they had no profit, even though they were selling so many of their torches, to develop new torches. Around that time, I also was looking at camp lighting and had this rather odd object. This actually came out of the mines. I had it for about uh, two years and used it on about three trips and then the battery needed replacing and the battery was more expensive than actually buying the torch so not particularly bright and very very heavy and bulky and nice but not that practical. My favorite all-time torch is probably this one it's actually plastic it's not even metal like the others but a beautiful performer this is called a Streamlight Polystinger it is a better performer than a three cell mag light. The trouble is this one the batteries didn't last, not so much that they didn't have a long life, they had a very good life, but after all oh, 20 to 30 charges, the batteries would fail and we'd have to go and shop for new batteries. But at less than half the weight and size, but about three times the price. And I don't think quite as robust as the Maglite, but a robust torch and waterproof as well. And I thought Streamlight was the next Maglite. I was wrong. They, 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 they came up with some beauties, really lovely, lovely flashlights. And I don't know if there is a, a mag light equivalent. There's mag light and everybody else, except nobody seems to be using mag lights except for those people that want to use them as a truncheon. There, there's, uh, people who actually want a torch with a really bright light, why would they buy a mag light? So that's the, my impression anyway of, um, and they are still mag lights still are probably the most robust of all of the flashlight manufacturers. Then along came LED Lenza because the importer in South Africa knew me and he gave me some items to test. A couple of them and I liked them very much. LED Lenza M17R. R means rechargeable. Now this is a 
very high powered multifunction electronic torch. A lock switch and if I move it once and turn it on it gives me half brightness. The, the next setting is extremely bright and it has a beautiful zoom as well like all of the LED lenses. Okay. Let me come on to my current favorite which is Nightcore and I bought this guy which is the MT20C and as you can see it's a bit chipped and dented. I love this. I, I thought this was, I thought this was wonderful. So I contacted Nightcore and I said how about sending me a few things for me to review? And of course they did. So what I like to do, I like to try out products first before I do a review in case I have to trash them because they're rubbish. Not always. I sometimes do that. I like to do that. One of the Nightcore products that I was given is of course this guy that I nicknamed because it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm going to call it the sun. Now I have to say though that the sun is, apart from being astonishingly bright, is just so beautiful to hold. It's just, there's just something, they're all a bit like that. It's time for the sun. It's so bright it has a recoil when you turn it on. You've got to brace yourself. See, I'll do it again. And of course, I have mentioned these little guys. They are the most useful camp light I've ever, I've ever had. I, I, they are just marvelous. In fact, <clears throat> I'm going to organize a giveaway. I'll get some of these from Nightcore. If you would like, I'm going to organize maybe 10 of them to give away. How do you like that? Okay, keep watching the channel. I'm going to organize that in the next two or three months. Let's have a look now at some of the other stuff they sent me. Because every six months or so, they contact me and they say, oh, we've just brought out this. Would you like to review it? And most of the time I say yes. Sometimes I say no because it's not. I mean, they sent me recently a, uh, a utility knife, which actually I've been using, but it's not really for camping and everything. So I'm not going to review it. I'll just keep it. But they're, they're, when they bring out new products, which is a lot, they contact me. And of course, I've now been using head torches. In fact, I, you can see from quite a long ago, um, shots of me in a, in a car. I like to strap them around my headrest because I always know where to get them. And you can see from, from several years now, uh, I've been using Nightcore. So there's, that's the latest one. That's another head torch there. And there's another one there. I'll go through them very, very quickly for you. Uh, this is the HC33. Uh, uh, head torch and multi-purpose torch because you can actually remove it from the thing. Um, haven't fallen in love with that one. This one is the HC60. It is a very, very good head torch. And in fact, on my trip to Botswana and Zimbabwe 2018, I charged the battery and didn't take a charger with me. I was balancing up the, how much weight I could carry because I had to carry carrying equipment on airplanes and things like that. So I just thought one battery, one torch and that and it lasted the whole time. I find it a little bit heavy. Not a lot heavy, but just a little bit heavy. What I like about it is the fact that you can immediately just put your hand up and feel the switch. Because to me that's quite an important thing to do uh, with a head torch. is just to be able to go up and turn it off, turn it on or make it brighter without having to fiddle with it. This is their latest. This is the NU32. I like this very much because it is much lighter and also the switches. I think Nightcore you should make these switches proud. This, this, the, the rubber, they should have little bumps on them. You should have a, a different sized bump. You should have a round ring on the one and a knob on the other. It's rechargeable by USB. Yes, that's the way to go. We want USB charging. But I want to show you this guy. Now, if I think about all my years with flashlights, I can't think of one more practical than this and I just started using it now and I'm absolutely loving it. It is 
the Nightcore MT21 Charlie. It has a tilting head, so I can set it down, tilt it in the direction I need it. It has a magnetic end, so I can put it onto the side of a car or any ferrous metal. Single rechargeable battery, it's not rechargeable inside, but I have I use the, the Nikkor charging system, so I have all of these torches, with the exception of the internal USB charging torches, use the same battery set that Nightcore use. And of course, I've used a very small selection of all of the brands available. So the fact is that this is a race. It's a race to produce the best set of flashlights, and at the moment, Nightcore is probably in the front pack somewhere but there are other phoenix i've got two oh i have to show you something i have to show you a piece of kit i've got to show this to you <clears throat> here it is it's um it's called the phoenix ld02 single AAA battery i use it for absolutely everything it's in the front console of the car as you can see it's extremely battered it has been through a washing machine twice now that is a well-made torch now the thing is that if i'm on a trip and i'm carrying lots of cameras and bags and everything i'm not going to carry more than one torch i'm going to carry one and it's got to work and it cannot let me down this might sound like an old man talking now I don't consider myself old. I consider myself in the latter part of middle age. Uh, we are very lucky in that we've got this LED technology. I mean, really astonishingly lucky. On average, I mean, I would probably have to take three sets of batteries for um, you know, a, an old style D cell torch on a trip. Uh, now I charge one set and that's it for the whole trip. I didn't even have to think about it. And the um, USB chargers charge them, you know, three or four times during a trip from the, you know, from the car. And uh, that's it. We are very, very lucky to have such beautiful technology. I mean, it's the middle of the day. <laughs> so it's, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love these things. And... Well, anyway, that's my little torch story. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. They are beautiful.